have very serious work to do tonight. Please bring out your notebooks, your Bible. Let's get to the business of the night. The weapons of our warfare, part two. Hallelujah. We've been examining the subject of spiritual warfare. And please, 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 if you do not have the part one, please get it. It's free. This is not one of those messages you just listen to the part you like. Hallelujah. I consider this to be a very, very important subject. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare, part two. Part one was powerful. I've listened to it at least three times myself. Hallelujah. It's a build up and I want us to participate tonight. Please don't just write. Believe what you're writing. Concentrate. I said it the last time. For many of us, this may be the link between where we are and where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told us it's a course and I read out the curriculum. Let me review it quickly. The areas we'll be touching. Now, the subject of spiritual warfare is a very broad subject with different perspectives. Some biblical, some emotional, some cultural. Hallelujah. We're examining the biblical concept of spiritual warfare. And this is very important. Hallelujah. And um, there are just five aspects we're going to touch. We touched a few and we'll continue from there. We started the last time with the reality of the spirit world, the spirit realm. Hallelujah. I, I showed us from scripture that the spirit realm exists. That all we see is not all there is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we said we're going to talk on the mystery of wickedness. What is really the agenda of Satan? Why the wickedness in the world? I touched a bit on that also. And then we'll talk on the realms and jurisdiction of satanic operations. The realms and jurisdiction. How far is far? What is the degree of access that Satan can have in the life of a man or a territory or a family? And then the fourth area of consideration is the weapons of victory. What are the spiritual arsenals that have been put at our disposal to establish and maintain our victory? I think this is one of the most important part of the teaching, the weapons of our victory. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap it up with um, commanding victory, spiritual laws and the rules of engagement. It's not enough to know the weapons and the arsenals that you have. You must understand how to engage them scripturally. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I started the last time talking to us about the book of Ephesians. How that theologically speaking the book of Ephesians is considered to, to contain the highest church truth. Six chapters that are divided into three segments. Hallelujah. The first part tells us what we have become. On account of what Christ did for us on the cross. Tells us that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Why are you all looking like this? Ah. Praise God. Is it because I'm talking of warfare? Everybody is just waiting. Let me know what is going to destroy my family. Take it easy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be at peace. hallelujah you will see how cheap satan is at the end of this teaching really really look let me tell you something not everybody is intimidated by satan he knows that there are people that know him how many of you have some brothers that um will go into a place where nobody knows them and they'll just be shining and lying and the day you come you say what did you say you say you were staying in a three-bedroom flat or god i know you we grew up together that's what we'll do to the devil we tell him, no, all this, this noise you are making, we know you. We know where we know ourselves. Behave and live. 
Hallelujah. Say amen if you believe that. Amen. So that all of those threats, when somebody comes to tell you, I know you will not make it. I know you and you're crying and running up and down. Save your tears. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the book of Ephesians talks to us about being seated with Christ and then it also tells us how to walk. How to live the Christian life, the Christian character. Hallelujah. From chapter 3 down to chapter 5. And then chapter 6 tells us how to stand against the wiles of the enemy. I don't want to go over part 1. Please, we have the, the teachings. Listen to it very, very well. And there was something I shared in part one. I don't know if I will repeat myself, but you need to hear it. Hallelujah. I told us the reason why Satan is all around looking for people. Praise God. Praise God. There is a reason why Satan is chasing everybody on earth. Believer, unbeliever, there is a reason and you must know why. I spoke about it quite extensively in the last teaching. Among other reasons, I told us that I spoke to us a bit about the creation of angels. How that angels were not made from the dust. Is that true? What we call thunder, the lightning, that was their material of creation. They were made from light. Hallelujah. That's why they can translate themselves. The Bible says Satan has translated himself as an angel of light. They can translate themselves and... Um, so Satan really wanted the image of God, that part of God that makes God, God. God denied him and then molded dust from the earth that he once walked upon. And then God took that which Satan desired and put it in man. And man became Satan's arch enemy. Hallelujah. All right, let's get to tonight's teaching, the mystery of wickedness. This is very important. The mystery of wickedness. I have a bad news and I have a good news. Let me start with the bad news. The bad news is wickedness is real. Say it after me. I know it's a bad news. Just say it. 1 John chapter 5 verse 9. 1 John. Chapter 5. Verse 19, I'm sorry, not 9. First John 5, 19. Are you there? Some people are opening the Old Testament. You must be joking. Hallelujah. First John 5, verse 19. If you are there, let's read together. One to read. And we know that we are of God and the whole world the whole world lieth in kindness, brotherly affection. It says, the whole world lieth where? In wickedness. This is the truth that many people have refused to accept. This world we live in is surrounded by wickedness. And tonight, briefly, we'll examine the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. To let us know that there is an operation of wickedness that is present in the earth. And because we live here today and now. And we plan to live here for a very long time. It's important to understand the realities that are here and how to exempt ourselves. Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Finally, against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Some versions say in heavenly places. The heavenlies. I told you that there are many planes of heavens. Is that true? Remember our teaching? 
the reality of what heaven and hell get the teaching i told us that there are many dimensions in the realm of the spirit many when you say the heavenlies you're not necessarily talking about the heaven of heavens where god dwells or the third heaven there are many planes in the spirit and the bible generally calls it heavens are you getting my point and i told us that this is where some people have gone to and come back and say they went to heaven they went to astral realms they went to different kinds of realms hallelujah the bible says that there are entities that are called spiritual wickedness it's even a name spiritual wickedness and they dwell in the heavenlies they operate from that plane hallelujah so the whole world lieth in wickedness how come we are not taught that this world we live in from the moment you are born you are born into a system that is fabricated and doggedly into wickedness and until you exit this realm you are going to live with the reality of this predicament so knowing how to exempt yourself and your loved ones and exempt all that are around you is the reason why we are taking this topic are you getting my point you are not going to stop the world from being wicked are you getting my point because the bible calls satan the god of this world the god of this system the one who fashioned a system that does not honor the values of the kingdom someday every knee will bow experientially is that true and every tongue must confess that jesus is lord to the glory of the father but as at now we do not yet see all things remember our teaching last week we do not yet see all things that's the reason why there are a brother who was saying arm robbers came and wanted to injure him think about it why will somebody sit down in the night while you woke up in the morning he was thinking i'm going to wound somebody this night how can a man think this is his goal for the day i must wound somebody this night it's called the mystery of wickedness how many of you say oh why are they treating us bad who did i offend in my village that they want to stop me from marrying welcome to the reality of this world you you don't dr paul and Encher says this this the earth realm is not a playing ground he said it's a battlefield whether you believe it or not as you grow the realities that will confront you will make you to reconsider whether it is a joke or it is true that wickedness is real many preachers listen to me many preachers in a bid to magnify god and demagnify satan have while that is a good intention they have lied to people are you getting me lied to people that uh, there is the concept of wickedness it does not exist please get this once and for all wickedness is real are you getting me somebody just gets up and looks at you and says, benga i don't like you why i i choose to hate you and my life's goal is to prove to you that i hate you you buy a nice car and take it home somebody just begins to frown ah uh ah -uh. car how old is this boy 25 25 i was 40 when i bought a bicycle and because of that listen 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 many of us grew up in the cities we grew up around we watched all kinds of 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 deceitful films that have covered us from the reality of the fact that wickedness is real a number of us here are not working but for those who are working you know that when you get a job for one single space of promotion there may be a number of people and everybody's eyeing every other person is that true the day your director calls you they call you and say so what did he say the next day you come back and your director say don't be stupid me i spoke to you something happened somewhere that you are not aware of but you are paying a bitter price those who understand that wickedness is real and have equipped themselves with the revelation and the spiritual arsenals will keep soaring as if satan does not exist 
and they will leave others crying and languishing. There are many of our loved ones who don't go home. Some of you have not even gone home since you were born because they told you one scary story. They say nobody goes there and comes back the same. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare. Occultism is real. Witchcraft is real. Yokes are real. Bondages are real. Even Jesus said he was sent to deliver those who have been locked up in prison. They didn't see the prison physically, but they are in prison. Moving, but in prison. Hallelujah. This is what is affecting a lot of families. A lot of families. And I prophesy to you that in the name that is above all names, as we are teaching, just as the teaching is going on, many of you will suddenly find out that liberty, you are just liberated from this nonsense that the devil wants to tie you with. The strength of evil is ignorance. The strength of evil is ignorance. That's the highest weapon satan uses against the people of god ignorance the bible says in psalm 82 he said they know not neither do they understand they know not and then a few of us have gone a step further to know the name of jesus oh jesus 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 and it's not producing any result at all so we're going to be examining these things praise the lord so wickedness is real what is the goal of wickedness why wickedness what is the goal of the evil that we see in our society what does satan want to achieve with armed robbers and terrorists and wicked people in the villages and around witches and wizards necromancers people who try to project wickedness to people's lives what is the goal we must know where satan is going why is he doing this hallelujah what is the whole idea behind the set the, the devil trying to turn the heart of your father against you or your mother against you or your loved ones or your employer or your boss or your pastor whatever why does satan enjoy wickedness what does it do to him hallelujah wickedness or evil generally is brought to attempt to achieve three things number one to discredit God to discredit God in your life to discredit God if there is anything Satan is obsessed about is bringing you to a point where the credibility of God drops to zero in your life how many of you have heard people say I used to trust God but right now I trust anything that works god or others have you heard people speak like that they say i remember i trusted god from 17 years till 40 years god didn't bring a husband right now i trust any other thing whether a stick a candle fire once it produces result i trust it that's exactly the goal of wickedness when armed robbers attack you and you are shouting Jesus, Jesus, and they still injure you, and they wound you. When certain things happen, they attempt to discredit God, discredit the word. Never forget this. The mystery of wickedness was put in place by Satan, first in an attempt to prove that God is not as great as we claim he is. So, when a man has been victimized so much, that, that, that pain becomes a stronghold in his mind. How many of you have seen people that when you are praying, their eyes are even open, they are just looking at you, saying, in Jesus' name, Amen. While you are praying, they feel like slapping you. Once you just round up the prayer, they just move. You know they didn't believe this at all. The mystery of wickedness at work in their life. 
Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you tell your parents, oh, I'm attending Koinonia, God is doing great things. And then the devil orchestrates something terrible to happen. Are you getting me? Your father has an accident or something like that. And he returns back and you say, Daddy, I just wanted you to know that I dropped your name in the prayer request. He will give you a dirty slap and say, you and all the liars. and Every man of God is a liar. The mystery of wickedness. Number one, to discredit God. Do you not see that that was exactly what Lucifer tried to do in the Garden of Eden? He came and met Eve. Read his conversation with Eve. He said, did God really say if you eat of this fruit, you will die? Now, you know that he used half truth, right? He was not, he just patched it up. He said, but do you know that there is a story you do not know? And that's why, that's what you will know when you eat of this fruit. And truly, when they ate of the tree, the eye, their eyes were open and they began to have a sense of the knowledge of good and evil. So number one, to discredit God. Number two, number two, to weaken and possibly destroy your faith in God. To weaken and destroy your faith in God. The Bible says, be not weak in faith. Speaking about Abraham now. Be not weak in faith. The Bible says, he considered not. So, wickedness is orchestrated by Satan. Listen, please. Wickedness is orchestrated by Satan to weaken your faith. When you really see wickedness, you will need to trust God to stand. That's what philosophers are using. Why can a loving God allow children to be dying in Sudan? Is that not what people say? How can a loving God allow this and that to happen? And it weakens your faith. This is why Jesus says, if the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? Especially for many of us who have been taught that when things go wrong in your life, it's a sign that something is wrong with you. It's a sign that something is wrong. Satan capitalizes on the inconsistency of that message. And when anything happens, you just believe that this trust you've been having in God. This is why Job said, though he slay me, Satan, you won't achieve what you are trying to achieve. Though he slay, are you seeing now? Job's wife came to a point where she was tired. She said, Job, Mio, I don't think God is faithful again. Curse God and die. When your wife tells you to curse God and die, that's a level of discouragement because she's supposed to be the last person that will stand by you. Are you getting my point now? So to discredit God, to discredit God, number two, to weaken or totally destroy your faith. Number three, what's the goal of the mystery of wickedness? To perpetuate, listen please, very important, to, I'm thinking of the best way to put it, to, to become a channel through which the program and the evil agenda of Satan for nations will continue. Let me explain what I mean. How many of you have heard that word covenant? Why will the devil want our forefathers huh, to go and bow to him and enter a covenant on behalf of people yet unborn? What, what, is, what is his passion about people that are not born yet? Are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to explain now? Because Satan is trying to secure a channel through which he can pass a transgenerational channel. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Are you getting my point? So although it will take 30 or 50 or 100 years for this generation to be born, Satan will say, 
you since you are representing them and i'm going to explain this to you i will explain to you i hope if i can remember the mystery of reproduction and you understand that reproduction is not just about sex and giving birth the bible says by one man not one woman sin was transferred are you getting me by one man through the blood praise the lord so he now enters a covenant and says all right in this family we will worship you give us children we will worship you give us protection deal is that true now he can go and give birth to 30 children no cs with his wife no cs no hospital but there will not be any complication because a pact had been entered are you getting my point fast forward two or three generations somebody comes up and says i believe in jesus christ i'm not going to involve myself with all of these things because you see i'm going to talk about the mystery of blood blood does not have time it speaks it will raise an alert in the realm of the spirit something is being compromised here and the next thing that will happen is that these people because they are trying to breach a contract are you getting me so it will activate the mystery of wickedness the devil will now come to say who is trying to stop this and if you have authority enough you will be the one who will break that cycle and enact a new one are you getting me and if you do not sustain enough knowledge you will die and then the devil will say this is a, an example of what i can do with anybody who plays with me and the other person will say i'm willing are you getting my point now I don't know how you are going to write the third point but that's what i that's what the third point is praise the lord to become a channel through which transgenerational wickedness will be perpetuated god bless you sir. the mystery of wickedness look up how many of you know that if there are no human beings in the earth wickedness will be unfruitful it won't yield any result is that true When you understand this, you will know that wickedness will not cease. In fact, the Bible says it this way. The Bible says, um, how did he put it now? It says, ah, end time, Matthew 24, how did he put it? How that people will be offended, is that true? paraphrasing like wickedness will increase the imaginations that are in the hearts of men will increase look at me those who are praying listen and i want you to get this those who want to solve their family problems by just saying in the name of jesus christ wickedness will not happen to me when I finish with you, you will know that there are certain things that if you do not do, that prayer is incomplete. Because there is already a seed, like a gene. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you believe what I'm teaching? I know this is wrestling a lot of our theology. Oh, I'm in Christ. Calm down. We're, 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 we're heading somewhere. Because many of us have been cheated. Oh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. I will show you that your personal salvation does not change your territory. Are you getting my point? That I am born again does not automatically make my mother, brother, sister, and father born again. If that were the case, everybody would just kneel down on behalf of their clan and just accept Jesus once and for all and let's rest from this nonsense hallelujah is that true so wickedness is real and the goal is to discredit god to weaken your faith every single arsenal that satan launches at the believer is aimed at discrediting the faithfulness of god because he has a name and he is called faithful and true that means he does not lie that means he cannot lie that means he is ever his 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 um ever faithful through all generations but when things begin to happen in your life 
that negate what the word of God is saying. That's Satan attempting to discredit God in your life. Say amen. The mystery of wickedness. Wickedness is real, brothers and sisters. This operation is working in our government. This operation is working in our families. Look at me. Look at me. How many of you have heard the stories of parents who will put something in hot iron and carry it and press it on their children? Is that called discipline? That is the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Or a mother look at her own daughter and say, I curse you. You won't marry, you won't move forward. This is a, it's a spirit. It's not just an attitude. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? And if we do not understand this and deal with this, it will limit us in a very mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening our eyes. So the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, your village, your house, the job you are trying to look for, that office is in the midst of wickedness. You may be born again, but are your fellow employees born again? Hallelujah. And you are going to have to live with them. You do business with wicked people. You go to buy rice and buy gari from somebody who went to a herbalist. You bought it. You ate. Is that true? So you are not going to say, me, I will only work with Christians. Uh -uh, it's impossible. You live in a world where everyone is permitted to believe what he wants to believe. And because of our interrelations, you must find yourself relating with people. So you must know how to keep Satan where he belongs. Praise the Lord. Are you following me so far? Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the realms and jurisdiction. The boundaries of demonic operation. I won't stay too long in this aspect because I guess that this is the part that has brought fear and confusion and this is one of the most unscriptural areas of spiritual warfare in terms of its explanation. This is where you have people um, write accounts in an attempt to show us the structure and the organogram. Are you following me now? I know that there are many books, hundreds and probably thousands and even millions on books of books on spiritual warfare, deliverance, and so on and so forth. And there are many opinions. Are you getting me? The Bible tells us something very interesting. It said, do not be ignorant of the devices. I told you the word devices is the word stratomai. His strategies. So, we are just concerned about his strategies. We are not necessarily concerned about the kingdom and what the organogram of the satanic kingdom is. Are you getting my point? I personally believe that an extensive study into the organogram and the structure of Satan is not really necessary. Especially in light of the fact that we know that in Christ he has been defeated. Are you following what I'm saying? So, I'm just guiding us just to bring awareness. There are many books and I've read some of them. You have read some of them. Hallelujah. They begin to tell you all kinds of things. They list physical territories in the earth where there are headquarters of demonic activities and so on and so forth now i'm not i do not have enough authority to dispute the things that are being written are you getting my point especially for those that do not compromise the written word of god some of these things were written by people who allegedly said they were part of the demonic kingdom and for some of them they were deep into occultism there are lots of books, Occult Grandmaster, Now in Christ. There are books by Rebecca Brown, Mary Baxter, um, Dr. Olukoya, who is considered to be an authority in the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare. There are a lot of others, you know, different brothers, prophets, people, and so on and so forth who have written books. Others went to heaven, others went to hell, others died and came back, others just studied the Bible. So we have this extensive um, description. Level 111, level 999, level 666, level, you know, this and that and that. And for many people, we have 
rather than concentrating on the strategies the methods of satan and understanding our victory we have paid attention trying to study and research on the organization of the demonic kingdom let me tell you something if you do that the danger is that everything will suddenly become demonic around you have you seen people like that why are you looking at me like this they just say kai this lady you are because of something they read they say okay in our kingdom when we want to seduce a man we look at him like this so a lady is quietly she's even feeling sleepy and just looking at you just say kai in jesus name don't blood of jesus you are putting sign of the cross so we don't want to see this kind of immaturity in the body of christ that's why there must be a balance are you following me there are people who don't wear black on friday or on sunday because they read a book and he said every time you wear black on friday notice check left you will see a star that's a sign that we are coming out you know and all kinds of sects come up with now i hope you understand that i'm not condemning anybody you get my point i'm only trying to explain to you that it is quite counterproductive to spend all of our time and energy trying to understand the entire organization listen how many ceos maintain the same structures they change so that you were delivered from occult in 1980 does not mean the organogram that used to exist still exists it is logical for any leader to be dynamic are you getting my point so when you come and say okay there is a demon his name is Luke. He's the one in charge of Zaria. He's the one appointed to stop Koinonia. His name is Luke. What if Luke? What? What, what if Luke was promoted or demoted and they now brought another person and you are still advocating and you say, Luke, I'm speaking to you now. You are hearing my voice. Luke is somewhere saying me. I'm not even in Nigeria again. And now you're shouting. You see, there is a lot of spiritual ignorance. A lot of it. And most of this has come because we have uh, not necessarily gone out of scripture, but taken other materials and used them as the ultimate template to help us understand the realm of the spirit. I think sufficient enough is the information the Bible gave us about Satan. I believe it is sufficient enough. Praise God. You get my point? If you were in the occult before and you were delivered and you wrote a book, please don't feel sad. If you wrote prayer point that your book should increase, it will increase. We prayed for you. Hallelujah. But at the same time, don't go about sitting down teaching people and saying, okay, in the realm of the spirit, red means danger. White means this. Yellow means this. So, don't wear yellow shirts. If you really mean business with prosperity, keep yellow shirts aside. This is part of the teaching that has moved from church to church and place to place. So, we have brought religiosity and a lot of forms of religion in an attempt to keep Satan. There is nowhere in scripture, listen, or you say, ah, don't take products from Procter & Gamble. They are Freemason and all of that. What do they make? How many of you have used their inhaler? You force it in your nose and you are, and did you go to hell? Did demons come to disturb you? You see, I'm saying this thing because we are touching on this topic and I'm trying to clear the air. There are many of you who say, I know somebody is a bad person. He sells meat. Me, I know this guy goes to the harbor. He won't eat his meat. Question. The one you have been eating before. Who told you that that meat was not taken to a herbalist? Are you getting my point? Rather than allowing fear put religious rules. Why don't you rise up in revelation. And realize that the Bible says a thousand shall come by your side. Only God knows how many poisons I have eaten in my life. Because the Bible says when they serve you just give thanks and eat. Hallelujah. Many of us don't eat certain people's food. Just say, this lady is always frowning. At. I won't eat her food though. I don't know what I've entered right now. 
And then many of us, listen, I have had other teachings. Aha, let me even talk about it. I've had other teachings that say somebody can come to you. Come. He can just come and hug you and he has initiated you. Listen, let me balance something very quick. Was that how you got born again? You think, listen, I want you to understand that the will of man is a powerful force. Even Jesus stood at the door of the heart and was knocking until man agreed to open. Are you getting my point? If you are not in Christ or you are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom, it is possible. Are you getting my point? But to now come and say, oh, because I'm just sitting down and you came to put with one on my head, suddenly I've been initiated, except you don't carry fire. The witch doctor together with his fire, it will burn into ashes there. There was a time people were complaining that a particular woman in Joss, she was doing some kinds of funny things and then getting power to make people come and eat her food. You know how many people ate that food? <laughs> when they told me the restaurant, I laughed. I said, oh Lord, I don't know whether I've eaten here or not, but it cannot have power over me. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift, lift up, up my, my soul? soul. Oh, my oh my God, God. I, I trust in thee. thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. I pity the person that will go to a coven and call my name. That's the last time you will have the opportunity to shout it. Believe me. See, I'm rushing myself because let me see if we can get to weapons of victory. Except you don't know the spiritual arsenals you carry. Let me tell you, Satan can bow. This is the sweetest part of this gist. That's why I want to rush all these things so that we'll get there. Say after me, Satan can bow. I hate the way Satan has been so magnified. There are many people who teach, they say, do you know that these classes of demons are so powerful, not even you can stand them. There are people who believe that. I don't believe that. Absolutely. I don't believe it. The Bible says, God gave him a name that is above every other name. He said at the mention of that name, every knee, not some, Every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Let's rush. So, jurisdiction. Number one. Number one. The realm of the spirit. Territories of operation. Or realms of operation. Number one. The Bible says that they operate in heavenly places. So, that is a realm of demonic operation. Please write quickly. Shiba Baba Baba. Can you put strings? Or put it on door. Hallelujah. Wickedness. Now, these are the territories that exert it upon governments. Remember that the Bible says, there's no time to show you this. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, remember the story? The Bible says that principality that was operating over the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia, which stood the prayers of daniel is that true when gabriel was going to bring him the answer he said when he, when gabriel arrived he said from the very first day that you set yourself to pray your prayers were heard okay and while he was coming the prince of that territory so there are powers that station themselves across territories that's why you can see that certain geographical territories exhibit similarities of certain character is that true you find out that certain people, certain territories, the men are irresponsible. Certain territories, you know, they, they, are, they are given to anger. Certain territories, they are given to irresponsibility and all kinds of things. You find out that it's a common trait because of these operations of darkness in the heavenlies. Second is the air. 
please take notes. This is very important. Notice that it is the features that the Holy Spirit uses to manifest himself that Satan also operates there. The air. The Bible talks of the prince of the power of the air. These spiritual forces of wickedness are the ones who manipulate and control people because the media is through the power of the air. Are you getting my point now? They are, they are the ones who initiate mind control systems. And this is probably one of the most disastrous manifestations of darkness. Deception and ignorance. Are you learning something now? So the air, the prince of the power of the air second scriptural proof that the air is one jurisdiction of operation remember when jesus was going to meet the madman in gadara what happened the bible says suddenly the winds and the waves became boisterous but jesus looked and he knew that this was not just about wind this was not just about the storm look at the tsunami that happens is it not wind wind these are spirits it's just that we cannot see it with our optical eyes. They are spirits. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So the air. Number three, water. Water. This is very important. This is where we talk about the marine world or marine spirits. This is the jurisdiction of darkness that is responsible for prosperity, for lust, for seduction. And all kinds of perversion. Every kind of immoral perversion is associated with this dimension of demonic operation. Water. Very important. Are you learning something tonight? Water. And this one is very important. That's why you find out that territories that are covered around the river Rhine areas exhibit attitudes of lust are you getting me lost unfaithfulness in marriage and all kinds of you see it rampant are you getting my point this is spiritual intelligence i will give you sufficient to the point that you need that i believe you can research more but i think that explaining to you what i'm explaining to you is giving you intelligence so that when you are talking with people it's like a doctor diagnosing a patient with this spiritual intelligence you will understand you will know how to act hallelujah praise the lord there was a time i remember at the bar beach it was it was a popular issue that uh, i think a particular bank or organization built a glass house is that true they built a glass house and the witches and wizards around the marine, they wrote a letter to them. They said, you better do something about those buildings before we scatter it. You are interrupting us. Water. Very important. Very important. Job began to talk of the deep sea creatures. He called it Leviathan. The deep sea creatures that arise from the water. You read the book of Revelations and it tells you, you see the interaction of water and all of these things. So I've told you the realm of the spirit, the air, the atmosphere. The water. This water one is very serious. Do you know something? I will show you from scripture something that may surprise you. Do you know everything you see in existence, the animals and the rest, do you know they came out of water? They came out of water. Genesis, let me show you very quickly. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army, the rising up. They'll break every chain, 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 break every chain. Uh, 
Help me search for it. Genesis 2. Verse what? 21. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Good Bible students. Verse 20 and 21. Genesis 1. Are you there? I just want to show you that the water is a very mysterious object. And God said, let the waters do what? Bring forth abundantly. So there is a mystery of abundance and water. Are you understanding me? Is it in your Bible? He said, let the waters bring forth abundantly. Hmm. The moving creature that have life. Where did they come out from? He said, and the fowl that may fly. Even the fowl came out of the water. It's in your Bible. Above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. Verse 21. And God created great sea monsters. And every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. Are you seeing now? Is it in your Bible? The water. Very, very important. This is why Satan associates himself a lot. And there are many demonic, diabolic things that happen with water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next medium of manifestation is fire. Notice that these are the same expressions of the spirit. Fire. Almost everyone here, or most of our villages have festivals. There is no festival without fire. How many of you have seen diabolic people put fire and keep putting it around them? What are they trying to achieve? It is a realm of operation of demonic substances. See, let me tell you something. Fire is a big mystery. Big mystery. You can't hold it. It doesn't fear anything, but it consumes everything that come ar comes around it. Hallelujah. Fire. Very important. Even the world will be judged with fire. The first judgment was with water. The second judgment will be with fire. Hallelujah. Number what now? Four? Number what? Five. I'm going to give it to you now. The fifth one is the earth. Dust. Earth. Adam. Hmm. Look at me. How many of you have seen people in your village get angry and they carried sand and spoke to it and dropped it back? Or like the Igbo people do when they take small drink, they pour small on the ground and say to our ancestors, hmm. What is it about the earth? The prophet looked and said, Oh earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. That means the earth is not non living like we teach in biology. It was in the days of Moses, the Bible says the people rebelled against God and the earth opened its mouth. It has mouth. It swallowed them. Till tomorrow we cannot find them. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? These are jurisdictions of operation. That's why priests and the rest put their shrines on the ground and then they sit down. Even if you give them one million, they won't go and build a luxurious house. That earth, they must associate themselves with the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These levels, this medium, these realms of operation. Every manifestation, every single medium of manifestation. Let me give you one more. Are you ready? Human beings, human vessels. As far as Satan is concerned, this is the best medium of manifestation why because every other thing i've listed does not have a will they don't have willpower as it were are you getting me and they don't have souls only human beings have souls please are you learning something
So Satan entered the madman. Remember the madman in Gadara. Do you know that the entire spirits across those territories, they were resident in that man. He stayed in caves. He was alone. He caught himself. But the moment Jesus was coming, without any publicity, he came out and went to wait close to the water and was waiting for Jesus to arrive. Immediately Jesus arrived, he began to talk to him. He said, we know who you are. Have you come to destroy us before our time? What time? What time did Satan teach them? Let me tell you something about the powers of darkness that you must understand. When they say their time has not come, what that means is this. Listen. You cannot seize their operation from the earth. But you can seize their operation from your territory. Are you getting this? Please understand this. That's why we can't all sit down right now and say, Satan, leave the whole world. Go to Venus or Mars. Relocate there. After all, it's empty. Go and build a new kingdom. Leave us in peace. So says the apostles and the prophets. No. You can't do that. What you can do, even Jesus, while he was on earth, he didn't cast Satan out of everywhere. Wherever he met with him, he told him, Mr. Man, go. Listen, Jesus himself answered one request of demons. They said, please, cast us to the pigs. What did he say? In other words, he knew that as far as exiting this realm is concerned, they are not going to leave. What we can do, are you getting my point? So that there are certain prayers we will stop praying at once. Are you getting my point? Many people pray and what they mean by their prayer is to tell the devil, bye bye, pack your load and go. Let me not see you and don't even go. Have you had that prayer? I cast you into Gehenna. Have you had that kind of prayer? Don't come out again. Uh... Is that really an accurate prayer? No, no. Don't feel bad. Believe me. With the kind of prayerful people on earth, if that prayer were answerable by now, there would have been some clear air that shows that sufficient demons have gone down to Gehenna. Gehenna is called the place of the dead. Are you getting my point? Listen. He said, resist the devil. There are people that pray all kinds of prayers. Oh, we cast you and we lock you up across a forest. Just stay there. Those kinds of prayers are not accurate prayers. Please, please listen. Don't be offended if you are used to praying those kinds of prayer. But I want you to know that we cannot cast Satan and demons out of the earth. We can only secure our territory. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion. He's like that. He moves to and fro. Praise the Lord. Say I'm learning something. Water. Wind. The atmosphere. I just want you to know that these are operations of darkness. Every time a native doctor or a herbalist wants to do certain things, one or more of these elements must be in place. Yet, these are the same elements that the Holy Spirit associates himself with. What does that tell you? Discrediting God. You see that? Thank you, Jesus. Let's touch on weapons of victory. I'll just use one and then we'll stop. Where? What's the time? Oh, there's time. Praise God. Don't look at the time. Look at me. The clock is not preaching to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, before we talk of the weapons of victory, let me just speak very quickly on the strategies of Satan. The strategies. The strategies. This is, I think this is the one that is very important. Strategies. There are three main strategies from scripture. They will not change. This is the one you can bank on. They will not change. Do not be ignorant 
of the devil's stratomai, his strategy, his way of doing things. It can come in different forms, but it is one of these three. Number one, I shared it last week, ignorance. 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 Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. Ignorance. Are you there? Okay, I thought it was projected. Let me turn there. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Okay. Second Corinthians 4. Not Chronicles, sorry. Second Corinthians. No problem, let's continue. In whom the God of this world or this age, the word age there is aeon. In whom the God of this system, the thinking pattern of this system, has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine upon them. Is that in your Bible? It says Satan did what? Blinded their minds. Everybody say ignorance. The number one and hear me as sophisticated as Satan looks his greatest strategy is to maintain ignorance in the lives of believers or across territory. Say ignorance notice every manifestation of wickedness in the earth realm has been strengthened by the ignorance of the people because the moment they know they will revolt until victory comes every bad government in the world has been able to execute its agenda by enforcing ignorance are you getting that that's the spirit of the power of darkness say ignorance ignorance now Come. Any other guy again? Come. I need two gentlemen. Stand here, stand here. I want to explain something. Stand here, stand here. Now, please, everybody look at me. I want you to understand this and I pray you get this revelation in Jesus' name. There are two sides to the understanding of the kingdom. Please don't forget. There are what? Two sides. The first is understanding the person of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ. The second is the principles of Jesus Christ. And that's what we call the principles of the kingdom. Is that true? Are you following me please? So the person of Jesus Christ. When you come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. When you surrender to Jesus Christ. You have embraced his person. But that does not automatically mean that you have knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting my point? The person of Jesus Christ secures your eternal destiny and secures your peace. The principles of Jesus Christ secure your victory in this earth realm. So there are many well-meaning believers who know the person of Jesus Christ in terms of their loyalty to him. But they lack sufficient understanding of kingdom principles. Are you getting my point? For instance, there are many well-meaning Christians who are poor and broke and they may remain like that forever. And they believe that just by being close to Jesus Christ, automatically prosperity comes. No, there, there is a kingdom principle that governs it. Is that true? There are many people, although they are close to God, many people hate them because the kingdom principle for access is honor. Are you getting my point now? So whether you are a Christian or not, when you dishonor people, you will never have access. Are you getting my point? So there is ignorance. What Satan tries to do is to take this first level of ignorance to stop you from seeing the light of the gospel to come to Jesus Christ in the first place. But if he does not succeed and by any means you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ, this becomes the second phase of the ignorance. He stops you. Are you getting my point now? So there are many well-meaning Christians who the devil has lost it on them 
as far as the person of Jesus is concerned. But he has shielded them from understanding the principles of the kingdom. That's why when somebody gets born again, the next mission is to subject him under a radical teaching ministry where the principles of the kingdom will be taught and then he will understand. This is what spiritual growth is about. Growing in intimacy. This is why we call koinonia intimacy and partnership. Intimacy is our knowledge as we progress deeper to know God. Partnership is our working with the word and with the spirit. Are you getting my point now? Do you understand this, this explanation I've given you? Because the greatest tool that Satan uses, his number one strategy is what? Ignorance. So, an unbeliever comes. How many of you have seen a lot of unbelievers who understand Bible verses? They understand a lot of Bible verses. You say something, they ask you, they say, okay, let's turn to the book of Matthew. I have this and that. And the next thing, they will not accept the simplicity of the gospel. Are you getting me? To surrender to Jesus Christ. Then, when they eventually surrender, the devil makes them feel that there is nothing more in the kingdom. So, they remain in church and they think remaining in church is equal to spiritual growth. So eventually they tell you, I've been here 20 years. And based on that, there is nothing you will tell me. Ignorance of the principles. Are you getting my point? This is the deliverance that is happening to some of you right now. Because you are born again. But you don't know why things are not moving the way the word says should be. Could it be that you do not yet have the comprehension? Paul himself prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to the Ephesian church who were already born again. He said, for this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding or revelation. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, flooded with light, that ye may know. So the Bible tells us, that according as his divine power has given us what? All things. But those all things are encapsulated in knowledge. When you have access to the principles, the door opens up to you at once. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. What is possible for me, although we are all equal in Christ, but our comprehension of kingdom principles have created the divide. So I can speak to a demon spirit and say, Go! And he will go not because my born again is greater than your own but my i have a greater comprehension two students in the same class taught by the same teacher one gets 100 one gets 50. are you seeing that now it is the degree of their comprehension it is because of that that some will be 30 fold some will be 60 fold and some will bear what they all produced but according, the Bible says those who were on good soil were the ones who had and understood. But the difference was their degree of understanding. Are you following me now? Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of Jesus. Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of the kingdom. The question I want to ask you is, how many principles of the kingdom do you know? This is the measure. See, listen. Listen, this is very important. Healing, for instance, healing comes from the body of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Are you seeing that? Favor does not just happen automatically. So, when you understand the laws of the spirit, then you will know how to navigate through life. So whenever you, you see a roadblock, you go back and search out diligently what kingdom principle is responsible for the result you are looking for. Because if God did it, then it is possible. It is only the light that will open the door. So arise and shine. Not because you want to arise. Your light, access. When that revelation comes and you understand it, the door is opened at once. If you understand what I'm teaching right now, it's automatic. You don't need to pray about it. That's why, see, 
the bible says while jesus was teaching the power of god was moving around waiting for those who will understand and believe so that at once it will be activated while peter yet spake these things the holy ghost fell on them because they understood and they believed immediately are you getting the point now so when the word of god returns to him is because he did not find a believer praise the lord are you getting me bless you bless you weapons of victory let me just take one the name of jesus hmm. i will share a revelation about the name there are many weapons of victory maybe let me just run to a few of them the name of jesus the mystery of the blood of jesus listen the power of praise the power of a seed i'm going to teach you the weapon spiritual arsenals that will lock the hands of satan at once the power of prayer hallelujah the power of unity the power of love all of these are dangerous spiritual weapons that will keep satan where he belongs is this teaching benefiting you are you getting something so i'll just take on one of them the power of the name of jesus we'll sing that song there is power hallelujah rise up on your feet we'll sing that song one more time to the shame of the devil and then we'll just pray just pray in tongues for a minute or two and then you sit down i'm about to give you a revelation that will set you on fire shabakata labaka there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. 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 Sing it one more time. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Can you stretch in tongues for just one minute? Sakata pakata preketa. Mamroso te kata baladabaka. Shapata la bakoka proske baladabaka shapata. Ipa pa pa pre. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power. There is power. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Ipa pa 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 hallelujah please be seated god bless you take your bibles let me have your attention lord let our eyes be open show us something powerful let me tell you something there are many of you if you catch this revelation tonight you will be amazed this name will work for you yes ago i called this name oh nothing happened i shouted jesus i said it like a special number hallelujah thank you jesus open our eyes oh god i show you a mystery right now mark 16 
break every chain. There are some chains that need to be broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Take my value system to every creature. He said, He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe, believe not shall be damned. 17, if you are a believer, please read it. One to read is projected. Stop. Stop. This sign shall follow them that believe. They will do certain things when they have a revelation of my name. He said, in my name, they will do what? It tells you all the things that can be possible in the name. In my name, they shall, number one. Number two. Number three. They shall take up what? Hold on. What is the meaning of that? What is they shall take up serpent? What is the meaning of they shall take up serpents? I will soon explain it to you. Because Jesus told Moses, I mean God told Moses, remember, he said, take the serpent from the tail. I will show you what that means. They shall take up serpents. It doesn't just mean carry a physical snake. Remember at the burning bush, when Moses met with God, I, you remember, are you getting my point? He threw the rod. Is that not true? And he told him to take it. To hold it by the tail. Is it not in your Bible? I will show you what that means. To take up serpents. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. I will show you a scripture that says the horn in a man's body is on his hands. A horn is a symbol of power. Are you getting my point? So he said with that horn you will take up serpents. It's a mystery. I will explain. He said, in my name, that will happen. He said, and if they drink any deadly thing, that means if they move in my name, no poison will harm them. So long as it is in my name. He said, they shall lay hands. I will show you the mystery of the laying on of hands. It's not just about touching people. The horn in a man's body is his hand. The apostle said that you will stretch forth your mighty hands. The right hand of God, the Bible says, is the hand of power. Not his right leg. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Listen, I want to explain to you the mystery of the name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, if I call you, come. Benga. The first revelation of the name of a man is it invites his presence. When you invoke the name of a man, his presence is encapsulated in his name. Are you seeing this? I called his name and what happened? His presence showed up. So the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs. It happened because a personality was answering to his name. So they went in the name. This is what it means to come in the name of the Lord. To come with the backing, the presence of God. Weapons of victory that can kick any satanic arsenal out of your life. Hallelujah. Watch this. I called his name. And he confirmed that that name is true. The name of a man is his identity every time see listen listen that's why when god met certain people he changed their names because the name of a man represents the prophecy of his life it represents his ability it represents the prophecy upon his life when he met jacob he said no you are not a cheat and a supplanter as a prince with god you are fought and prevail i change your name to israel and the prophecy started following him the mother of jabez bore him in sorrow and all through his life the name was following him name follows people a name is a spirit is a presence and jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me change my name hallelujah are you getting the revelation now so the first revelation is that the name of jesus compels his presence to show up in that scene hmm. 
listen now you understand what paul was saying say not in your heart who will ascend to heaven and bring god or who will go to the deep he said but the word is near you even in your mouth that means when it is uttered with revelation the presence shows up no time no distance are you getting my point this is a very very powerful revelation very powerful revelation you must believe this let me demonstrate something take this hold it this is ordinary handkerchief who brought this handkerchief are you seeing this this is an ordinary handkerchief he's holding it right give it back to me watch the power of the name this is not just for jamboree thank you jesus in your name hold this hold it what is the difference he just held this is it not so he held this he held this you see the power of god there breaking out again see this is a revelation this is why saying in jesus name is not what will bring the miracle there is a revelation this is what i want you to know it will rattle from the realm of the spirit and it will affect you in this realm this is a handkerchief he held that's why i did it in your presence it's the name say not in your heart who will go and bring him from heaven he is closer to you this is what koinonia is about the reality of a personality that can be demonstrated here and now paul said we do not teach cunningly devised fables these are not just stories that cannot be proven unbelief so you can be listen you can say jesus jesus nothing will happen The next thing I want you to know is, what is really this name? Let's examine it. What is the name? We have said what the name can do, but what is the name? Look up, please. I want to shock you. Listen, the name is not Jesus. You see where people have been missing it? This is a hospital. There's surgery going on right now. The name is not Jesus. He said, in my name. He didn't write the name there. He just said, if you can find what that name is. What is the name? The name is not J-E-S-U-S. Listen. The Bible says, Isaiah speaking. He said, you shall bear a son. They shall call him what? Emmanuel. Did they ever call Jesus Emmanuel? But the prophet said, that will be his name. The name was a revelation that God is with us. Is that true? He said they shall call him Emmanuel. Nobody ever called Jesus Emmanuel. Jesus was a name that was given to him in the earth realm. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. In fact, in Hebrew tongue and Aramaic, it's not Jesus. It's Jesus. That's what they call it. So it's not in the pronunciation. It's not in J-E-S-U-S. Before we pray, Tonight, once and for all, I want to reveal to you what this name is. In my name, Kaya Zata Kabarata Makapakata Teketa Tadeka Zekapata Beka Mambrosko Pekatalia Baba 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 Zeke Proska Bariata Sokotopa Sopadiata Embleketeka in the name i come 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 in the name 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 in Get this revelation tonight. Get it. And rise to a new level. Get it. And rise to a new realm. A new dimension. You don't have to strike it. The real is here. The authentic is here. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. 
I want to explain something to you. Listen. Many of you think that it is an act of arrogance when I tell you all men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. But something has separated people. The Bible says there are some bodies terrestrial, some celestial. Not everybody you see is the same. It's not pride. This is why we are bringing us higher. I tell you the truth. You will shake hell. This is how you will live as if Satan does not exist. You are coming in the name. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. God doesn't care whether it's Koinonia or anywhere. Anywhere his name is mentioned, he shows up. He doesn't want to know whether you are playing or you are taking it serious. It's a law. When you invoke it, he shows up. Because every man answers his name. Only a dead man does not answer his name. Oh, I believe the Bible. There is an angel standing close to this lady. Breakthroughs are already happening. Deliverances are happening. Believe it. Deliverances are happening. I hear the chains falling. Shakatabaladabai. Strongholds, I, I give the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I, I give the, the chains falling. I command every chain fall. I give the chain I command every chain fall. I command every chain fall. I command a big activity to go to an end now. Every sickness, go. Every infirmity, go. 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 Every yoke, every disease. I hear the chain. I hear the chain. Shakata bakata la ba 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 ba. Chains Hallelujah. Look at me. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Hallelujah. Sam, come. Watch this. Father, let the sounds rise in your name. Watch what will happen as he sings. Just raise any song and sing. Let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life and let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy life let hope rise Come on, say let hope rise. 
was the same person that ministered the same person that see many of you do not understand the power in the name Jesus didn't lie to us believe me that name is powerful that name is powerful every demon and every spirit just a symbol in this place right now every foul devil at the count of three i come in the name go 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 every spirit every demon every devil i command you in the name go out out you will not return again go go he said in his name we will cast out demons i cast out demons now in that name go 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 i take up ba 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 Cabra, so proto so precate. Every problem you have come here with tonight, it leaves you here now. Every problem you came here with, I don't care what it is, in the name. In the name, it will bow now. Every problem, every problem, every challenge, health, finance, go protect in the name of Jesus. Sit down if you can. We have to finish this. Please sit down. Sit down. Kadabala katabrondo soto lakosha. Sit down if you can. If they can't sit down, just leave them, please. We have to hurry up. I'm teaching you this because God is depending on you the goal is not to watch a man of God do this the goal is to show you that this is a possibility here and now take that name go and dislodge powers in your house let the people of God know that your coming for koinonia is not just a religion without a demonstration of the kingdom they will doubt you Go and change the things they say cannot be changed. See, you don't need to care how it will happen. Just go in the name. Just go in the name. Philippians chapter 2. Let me reveal to you what that name is. That's why I told us to pray in tongues. Something special, supernatural about the name Jesus. Something happens when I mention your name. Listen. God gave us power to solve problems. If you are not interested in solving problems, you will never get the power of the Holy Spirit. Solve problems. 
Philippians chapter 2. Let's hurry up. There are many weapons of victory. But I'll talk on one. Philippians chapter 2. Let's take it from verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9. Wherefore, Kabbalataya, God had so highly exalted him. Stop. I taught us last week that until Jesus died and rose again, he was not yet exalted. Is that true? Listen, I want to surprise you. The name was not yet given to man officially until he was coronated. Are you getting me? Because as it were, when Jesus was on the earth, his name was limited. Why was it limited? Because he was a man and he had not defeated death. So the last enemy to be destroyed, death, still had power over him. Are you getting my point? This is the reason, listen please, this is the reason why when he sent the 70, he begged them not to go to certain places because the power would not work there. But when he resurrected, remember Mary wanted to touch him and he said, no, don't touch me, you will corrupt a coronation that is about to take place. This is what the psalmist saw and he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my that was the coronation service of jesus the moment that happened he returned to earth and he said all hail now all power has been given go therefore no boundaries no limitations you just go anywhere it will work because a coronation had happened are you getting the point now so he begins to give us by revelation paul said wherefore God exalted him and gave him that means before then it had not been given he gave him a name what is this name that we have been looking for he said which is above every other name verse 10 whatever that name is whenever that name of Jesus he said at the name of Jesus the name is not Jesus every knee should bow at the name that was given to this person called Jesus. You get my point? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth. Ready for the name? Let me show you. 11. And every tongue should confess that that Jesus Christ has now received a name that is called Lord. That's the name. That's the name that was given to him. Look at it. That's the name. Lord. Psalm 24. Quickly. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. Are you there? Everybody read. One to go. Stop. Did he say the earth belongs to God? Do you know what Lord is? Lord means master. Lord means owner. Ma Lord means authorized legislator. Authorized. So the earth belongs to whoever will bear this name called Lord. The name was reserved. No one had taken the name yet. When Jesus defeated death, God said, you now qualify. Take the name. So you now become the literal possessor of the earth. Are you getting me now? The earth is the Lord's. So the Bible says, if you want the name, here is the condition. The name is upon a mountain. But who shall ascend to that hill? And who shall stand in his holy place? This is the requirement. He that has clean hands and a pure heart no man qualified to ascend that hill but jesus was as a man tempted like us yet without sin so he ascended the mountain that's why the bible says be 
before he led captivity captive he first ascended he descended after that he ascended he took the name and he came back and he entered the room without the door and he said all hail all authority has been given to me listen this is what jesus said listen he said whoever believes in me i will give the privilege to share my name you get the point that name lord so just like me he will become an authorized legislator so in my name he will cast out devils so that it will not make any difference whether it was jesus speaking physically or you or a handkerchief whatever comes in the name brings the presence of jesus directly that's why whether you speak english or hausa or greek demons don't hear those things they didn't speak english in bible days all you need to do is come in the name so handkerchiefs and aprons were taken handkerchiefs and aprons they contacted the name lord it says and the fullness thereof the world and all they that dwell therein listen 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 please the lordship of jesus is the revelation that when you come under you have carried the name it's not jesus it is a revelation that this man god has made him both lord and christ he's not just the anointed but he has become the owner are you listening to me so if i look at this sister for instance i come in the name because she belongs to god i have the authority to cast out whatever is molesting her because i come in the name are you getting the revelation hold on many people think it is j-e-s-u-s -S. do you know why we shout jesus we want unbelievers to know that the owner of that name is jesus are you getting my point when you tell demons go is go j-e-s-u-s is go l-o-r-d they search in the spirit to see whether you have the revelation of that name once you have it they will obey you so after this night you will go back home in the name many of you you will go and look for what you left and say where is it and it will say i left because the person who left was not the person who came back you came in the name remember there was a certain time even the disciples could not cast out devils from the epileptic patient because they did not have the name they thought it was just jesus doing a lot of things now when they had the name peter was angry in acts 3 he said now is my time to shine he saw the man who was lame and the bible says it says silver and gold i don't have but i have something you can know you have something he said this is what i have in the name you see that that was his treasure he said this one no man can take it from me i may not have silver and gold but i have something that can solve your problem in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up the man was still looking at him and peter said you don't know the power of the name i'm invoking he held him and the bible says he leaping stood son of man he said can these dry bones live he said i don't know he said all right now you prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded that's the secret when god gives you his name he has authorized you to legislate on his behalf as many as received him he gave them power the power is not falling and rolling on the floor the power is the ability to share in his lordship hallelujah this is what makes ordinary men to become something else so that you see an ordinary man moving but you don't try him when he calls on a government that is bigger than you you see that we are going to pray i've been hearing that there are many people that molest people on their way home 
we are going to pray let me tell you the truth i pity the next person that would try to molest anybody here it's the name it's the name listen please i want you to believe this believe this years ago they stole my laptop thieves came to our house we we're all sleeping they just carried the laptop and my brothers were running to chase them and honestly when i got up i just had commotion and i was laughing my own was not that i lost that i was just laughing i said oh god i love you if my laptop doesn't return give me money to buy another one and an angel appeared before me and he just did this and that was the end of it seven hours later the laptop was back on my table hallelujah some people from nowhere mobilized themselves and made up their mind to look for the thief they went and caught him in pz i was busy counseling the name see the name of jesus is powerful don't let secular humanism or the things that you that did not work for you before make you think it does not work are you getting me you say ah but i use the name i told you they stole my wallet but the wallet didn't come back but that does not ever mean that the name is not powerful this is the problem with a lot of people we are too our our faith is too small the moment something does not happen we just conclude this thing doesn't work you think so hallelujah praise the lord let me stop here we'll continue next week rise up i feel the spirit of prayer hold your hands together Come, break, take a, take a, lava, kaya. So, top, prakata, take a, prakata, break it. Hold your hands and pray in the spirit. Just for five minutes. Please, all the instruments coming. Pray in tongues. Shekata, break it, take it, break it, take 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll take three prayer points. Number one, listen. Let me tell you why this name does not work for many people. There is a little secret in the Bible that many of us ignore. The secret to resisting the devil. The Bible says, submit to the mighty hand of God. Submit. Your degree of submission is your degree to which his authority will flow. Many of us have not yet submitted to the lordship you have given your heart to the lord that's true but you have not come under his influence tonight you are going to pray and say lord i willingly submit to your authority to your government pray and watch the wonder watch the wonder of what will begin to happen in your life Inside and outside, make sure you are praying. Brata stop a body and lava call second delegate about Rabo Sabata Kapata Brigadia. Lord, I submit to your governing Rabo Santa Brigadia. Lord, I submit to your mighty hand. I submit. I submit. I submit to your authority. I balabosha batala bregedi gedegedia. Rabosha tanda bakatala bregedia. I bosha tanda bakosha gedele bregedia. La bosha batala bregedi gedegedia. I dosha tanda bakasha. Hallelujah. 
Listen. The centurion surprised Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus a revelation that touched him. The, Jesus said, let's go to your house. He said, no, you don't need to go. For I am a man under authority. I'm under the authority of the Roman government. And by reason of being under that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I'll tell the other, come. And Jesus said, what? I've not seen this kind of faith, this kind of revelation in Israel. Submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil. Hallelujah. 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 In the next five minutes, I like you. I don't know how you are going to pray. Leave your hands. Praise God. I know we are men of prayer. Listen. You have been confronting darkness. But you try it now in the name. You, you see the revelation. David met Goliath. He said you come to me with your spears. But I come to you in a name. In a name. You come to me with bow and arrow. I mean, I may be small. But there is a name. An office. I invoke the power of an office. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. That's what the Lord is asking you tonight. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. What is it that he cannot do? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. The God of wonders that can change situations. That is too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Now listen. The issues that have been affecting your life and your family in the next five minutes tell it i confront you in the name that sickness in the name come on prayer warriors come on prayer warriors we confront in the name. We in the name. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in His temple. The Lord is in His temple. The situation in my family is changing, is changing, is changing. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command healing. I command miracles. Hey, Command your marriage. Command your prayer life to come alive. Hey, confront your unemployment issue. Confront your business. Confront your family. I come in the name. I come in the name. I come in the name. Set a dead loss. The Lord rebuke you. 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 Let chains fall 
Ah. Let miracles occur. Yeah. Let testimonies yeah. occur. Lord, I release breakthrough. 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 In every family. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Please listen. We are going to pray. And this night, you are going to say, I take my eyes away from every challenge. Whatever the devil has used to discredit God in my life. Are you hearing me? There are many of us that cannot trust God because of the things that have happened or the things that are happening the bible says abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief he considered not the deadness of sarah's womb although she was close to a hundred years he counted him faithful faithful god cannot lie satan can be tired your faith can weary the devil listen Right now, I want you to lift up your voice and begin to prophesy and say, I take my eyes away. I don't care what is not working or what is working. God, you are faithful and your word must ah, come to pass. You are not a man. Come on, lift your faith. Lift your voice and pray. Provoke faith. I'm a believer. I believe the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word will not fail. The word will not fail. Pray. Let us so cry in my spirit. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. His promises are yea and amen. Pray. That sickness will leave. That oppression will leave. That failure will fall. The marriage will come. The job will come. The building will be completed. Your spiritual life will grow. Your prayer life will grow. The habit will die. The marriage will work. Pray. Yes, Lord. We are men of faith. We are a faithful generation. Koinonia is a place of faith. We let God talk to us. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Thou cannot be shaken, but abide there forevermore. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him hallelujah hallelujah yes I see a lot of testimonies coming mighty testimonies believe me mighty testimonies hallelujah praise the lord the last prayer point i'm led for us to do this hallelujah you're going to hold hands with somebody if you can pair yourselves into three that will be excellent you are going to pray for the finances of the people in that circle provoke the heavens to be open the lord in this month if, if there are not enough people just hold two or three anybody come on pray now we command it we command it in the name of jesus let there be testimonies breakthroughs in the name of jesus 
testimonies pray it will happen pray it will work pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint visit families oh god visit your people in mighty ways visit your people in miraculous ways prophesy gentiles come to your light kings to the brightness of thy rising your gates are continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles you will call on one person and a nation will answer you hallelujah 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 listen listen brothers and sisters you do not do good to your loved ones if you carry all this revelation and not work with it it has nothing to do with MOG it's about being an ambassador an envoy of his presence now you know that you are not ordinary it's not just the issue of confessing it it is the truth it is your present reality no matter how weak you think you are our job here is to make you become strong the bible says ordinary men came to the cave of adulam and david made mighty men out of them hallelujah you are not ordinary there is an anointing upon you there is an unction walk conscious of it it should not create pride and arrogance you are like a dove but where you see the devil you switch and you become a roaring lion listen i'm giving you an assignment this week take on a project resist the devil everywhere you see him are you getting my point if you look at yourself alone and all the revelations you have alone you are small are you getting my point but realize there is an authority every time you stand before situations just know that i am small but there is one who is mightier than i this is, this was a testimony of john the baptist there is one who is mightier than i invoke his presence to the scene and go to bed when you go home all those spirits that come to molest and press you you tell them now i sleep in the name come and press me yes absolutely i told you my story i was being oppressed by devils although a preacher because i did not understand the revelation the bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field hallelujah i don't drive devils from me when i caught the revelation i went home and i shouted i said the spirits that oppress me i invite you this night they were officially invited until tomorrow they have not come never look realize this just as father abraham and the rich man there was a gulf that divided them revelation is what will exalt you are you getting my point anything in your life that is not working as little as anything hallelujah you find something growing in your hand that should not grow 
don't just laugh see the problem is many of us are not convicted enough so you get ashamed once you go outside of this circle you don't want to look like you are spirit coco that's the problem so we can jump there are many of us here that you behave as if you are convinced but the sincere truth is if you walk out of here you are ashamed of everything you were shouting and praying about and when it takes it it comes to taking steps of faith even when your phone rings and it's a scripture you answer it or off it quickly lest you be embarrassed do you think that god did not know what to do with his time and he just brought men in the air to deceive them but i know whom i have believed i'm persuaded any day any time on jeans on trousers on suit i am persuaded i would die believing this revelation hallelujah please be convinced listen many of us in all sincerity we don't spend time with the word of god there are many of us after today now is until next friday again before you open your bible and start smiling you see ba brothers and sisters this thing you can't fake it if you are not doing it genuinely it will show are you getting my point no this is not one of the things you fake you can't fake conviction no you can't fake conviction you can play games with power you can do a lot of things but you cannot fake conviction hallelujah lift your hands i want to speak over your life please believe it's part of the things that we do all the time I wrote a post and I gave the media to put it on Facebook. I am not on Facebook, but once in a while as the Holy Spirit puts it in my heart, I write these prayers and they are not just to get activities. No. Hallelujah. It's our job to speak over your life. Listen, there is power in the blessing. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know to bless means to empower you to prosper to rise from where you are he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and earth and his destiny opened up please lift your hands i want to speak over your life hallelujah in the name of the lord jesus christ i bless you with the favor of god i declare over your life that you are well favored Amen. you are like a well watered garden Amen. whatever looks like mockery in your life i curse it now in the name of jesus christ Amen. i speak over the works of your hands i instruct them to prosper I instruct them to prosper Amen. whatever project you are having I speak to it grow Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. everything that is alive grows therefore I command it to grow Amen. I speak and I pray over your life all the destiny help us that are required to take you and to lift your hand and to introduce you to those who will take you to the next level i call them into your life now in the name of jesus christ i declare that the name works for you the same anointing you see in this house carry it and do wonders with it change destinies affect lives heal sick bodies the same way the devil runs here he will run in every area of your life i speak over your life whoever you bless is blessed whoever you anoint is anointed whatever your hand touches it prospers i bless you above every curse i bless you above every limitation I prophesy let Reuben live 
whatever is dead in your life whether in your organs in your system whatever should be there and is not there we create it now 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 whatever should not be in your body and is in your body at this moment as i speak i command it to live now and never return again I bless your finances. We are a prosperous people. And I declare that prosperity follows you. You are blessed in your health. Your mind is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Wisdom is at work in your life. You are men and women of character. You are men and women of power. You hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are men of faith. You are women of faith. Return with amazing testimonies. Whoever has mocked at your God, I pray this night that may the God I serve, may he step in like a warrior in your life and surprise they that have mocked God in your life. Whoever has laughed at your Christianity, I pray except it is not the god of heaven that wrote that inspired the writing of this word i pray right now be lifted above your equals may they see your lifting you do not merit it but let the grace of god take you may the grace of god take you I command the words of your mouth from today may they carry power Amen. you will solve problems with your mouth Amen. as you speak it you will see it Amen. I prophesy as you speak it you will see it Amen. the Bible says and God said it and he saw and he said and he saw as you say may you see hallelujah i agree with you right now whatever you have fasted and fasted and prayed about in the name that is above all names i introduce the faith of the son of god in your situation and i compel that mountain to fall now that dagon that attempts to speak against your life i come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I command that dagon, that devil, you bow now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And any man that wants to molest your life, whether as an armed robber, as wicked, see, listen, can I tell you something? I don't believe in killing people. But the prayer I'm about to pray is dangerous. I don't care who right now, whoever is tying down your life and destiny. Hear me. This night, if I be a servant of God, I don't care who. The judgment of God, this night, locates that one and brings them to book. Now, now, I don't care who. In the mighty name of Jesus, whoever says you will not go, he will go for you now. Whoever says you will not live, he will die for your sake. Whoever says you will not prosper, I curse their word. I curse their prophecy. I shared with you about the mystery of wickedness. Let me tell you, wickedness is real. Wickedness exists. I'm praying again this night. I, whoever has vowed that is not with his eyes he will see your progress this night this night i pray just as an angel of death went round egypt i command let there be shiftings i don't care who i don't care where i release judgment 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 this night
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. If you are here tonight and you have not met Jesus Christ, please listen. Let me have your attention. Please, no moving around. You've not made Jesus Lord of your life. You've never come to that point where you have acknowledged his lordship and his substitutionary sacrifice. It's risky to walk in this life without the security that comes in the knowledge of the person of Jesus. And some of you, you may have given your heart to the Lord inside and outside, but you may have found yourself derailing I want you to know that no man condemns you. This is home tonight. We're a family of faith. Hallelujah. It all starts with Jesus. The name of the Lord, the Bible says, is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. You must be righteous for it to work for you. And this righteousness is not yours by works. It is imputed by faith in the Son of the living God. Right now, I want to give you an opportunity these two categories of people no matter who you are no matter where you are please there's nothing to be ashamed of right now wherever you are please leave your seat and run out here i want to make jesus lord of my life i want to be reconciled to this life of power please celebrate them as they come there's nothing to be ashamed of may god bless you god bless you if there are people outside we welcome you thank you thank you we welcome you god bless you the devil is a liar he will not keep you on your seat. Don't let anybody keep you on your seat. No matter how far you are, come. Come, leave your seat and come. It's a call to a family of power. It's a call to a family of victory. It's your ultimate antidote against the assaults of Satan. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I want you to lift your right hand as you... Just as I lead you, it's not really the confession that brings eternal life, but the faith you have. This is just to guide you. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Tonight, I believe in you I receive eternal life into my spirit I'm born again I'm a child of God my name is in the book of life from today I experience the life of God Holy Spirit come and live in me make me an ambassador make me a sign and a wonder for whatever backward never in Jesus name amen lift your hands let me pray for you father thank you for these ones that you have brought out by your grace I pray that you preserve them in the name of Jesus there's no backsliding for you in the name of Jesus may the Lord strengthen you may he use you mightily may your walk in the spirit be fruitful from today let it be the beginning of a new journey whatever encumbrance takes you back to the way of the world i break that power over you now in the name of jesus christ i bless you in jesus name amen now thank you so much for making this glorious decision hallelujah i want you to follow the usher there's an usher waving his hand just follow him he will have your details will contact you tomorrow by 5 p.m will please like you to come around chapel the chapel of redemption amadu Bello university the main campus right just the book stand close there and there'll be people to attend to you to follow you up get you filled with the holy spirit and to talk with you god bless you please appreciate them as they go <laughs> hallelujah please keep standing let's take the announcements very quickly if this is your first time of worshiping with us here this is koinonia hallelujah this is your first time worshiping with us. I'd like you to leave your seat and please come very quickly. We love you. We celebrate you. God brought you here. Wherever you are, please, if there's anybody who is coming for the first time, if it's not coming, push the person. 
Say, I love you too much to leave you on.